To use reposition laser, you need to make two measurements with crosses on walls as far away as possible on the job site. These measurements need to be marked because you will need to measure them one more time from the second location you are templating from. Once both crosses are measured, move the laser to the second location. Then click Reposition Laser. If you need to, re-level the laser so you can hit the exact same marks you measured the first time. You will put the laser on the first mark you shot of a cross and then tap on the cross on the screen. Once that measurement is taken, rotate the laser so that the laser is on the second measured cross. Then tap on the screen on the actual cross and then the measurement will be taken. Once that measurement is taken, the laser will be repositioned and you can continue templating like normal. To add text, click Draw Add Text. Then type in what you want to add in the text box. Tap on the screen and it will be drawn. If you wish to modify the text you've drawn, click the Modify Text radio button. Then click on the text you want to modify and then change the text. You can change the size and the angle as well. In the Options section, you can add text to the Choose Text box. This is predetermined text that you will use commonly. Things like dishwasher, backsplash, or any other phrase you want to save and use commonly can go here. If you wish to create a drop-in, you need to use Define 00. zero. The 00, zero point is where the drop-in is going to be snapped to. So once you have the drop-in ready, all you need to do is click Draw Define 00. zero. Then click on the snap point that is most likely going to be the front edge of the sink. Once the 00, zero point is established, you can then go to File, Save As, and then save it as a drop-in. It will then appear in your drop-in menu on the right-hand column. Click Draw, Erase All on a Page to have the entire drawing on the current page erased. This will leave all other pages intact and untouched, only erasing the current page. If you wish to erase only a portion of a line, you can click on Draw, Erase Segment. Then click the two endpoints of the segment you wish to erase. Slab layout is where you will go once you have finished templating a job and you are ready to put it to the CNC plotter. First, you can select pieces by clicking on them individually, or you can click and hold and drag a box around and select multiple portions. Once selected, you can click the move arrows in the up, down, left, right, or diagonal directions to move those selected pieces in a certain direction. Below the move arrows is the distance. This is the amount of distance hitting the move arrows that are going to take each piece that's selected. To fill in numbers, you can use the keypad on the top right corner. And while pieces are selected, you can click the rotate 45 degree or type in the actual degree you want to rotate any piece. Below the rotate section, there's a drop down box that you can select any color. Once that color is chosen, you can click select. All objects in that color will then be selected. Once objects are selected, you have the option of copying to multiple pages. In the drop-down box below the color, it currently says page 1 for the default. If you click page 2 and then click copy, it will copy it. You also have the option to move it. Moving the selected objects should only be done if they have already been copied to another page. If you move the objects to another page, they will be gone from the page you are currently viewing. If you need to, you can undo and redo, just like in the main program. This is a very basic overview of what Slab Layout can do. If you wish to have more detailed information, we will be putting videos on our website that goes through specific jobs instances and how you would do them in Slab Layout. To add catalytic dimensions to the drawing, click Draw Add Dimensions. Then click two points you want to be the dimension. Then click in the direction you want the dimension to appear. This works the same way offsetting works, only this time you are drawing a dimension in. Maximum dimension is like add dimension, only you are going to find the absolute maximum dimension of all selected objects. To do this, simply click all the objects you want to select. Then click Done Selecting. Then you are going to click in the direction you want the actual dimension to appear. If you have selected a countertop that has a scribed wall in the back and the front's a straight line and you do the maximum dimension, it's going to find the actual farthest point back from that scribed wall and use that as the farthest maximum dimension. 
This is also the way you would check the measurement if the line already has a radii put on there and you want to view the measurement not up to the radius but including the radius. This is mainly used for the sawyer who will be doing the rough cuts for slabs. To add an angle to a corner, click Draw Add Angle. Then click on the lines that make up the angle and then the intersecting point. An angle will then be added to the drawing. To display the radius of an arc, click Draw Display Radii. Then click on the radius and by default the radius is displayed as a number then with an R to signify radius. This can be changed in the Options menu if you want to remove the R from the display. To offset a scribed wall, click Draw Offset Scribed Wall. Then type in the distance you want the offset to be and then select all the line segments that make up that scribed wall. Click Done Selecting. Then click in the direction you want the offset wall to be drawn. This is different than a normal offset because when you do account for the slight angles that a scribed wall will have, some lines would overlap and some lines would have gaps in them. This is simply taking the entire line and offsetting it the predefined distance in a single direction. Offset polygon is similar to offset scribed wall, only that we use it for offsetting something in multiple directions. This has to be closed polygon, meaning there are no contiguous breaks. Click Draw Offset Polygon, type in the distance, and then select the entire object. Once finished selecting, click Done Selecting. Then click the direction you want to offset. Since this is a closed polygon, you can only offset inward or outward. To add custom box, click Draw Add Custom Box. Then type in the dimensions you want it to be and then click on the screen. You can add a custom box to any snap point currently on the drawing by clicking on that snap point. Or you can drop it in arbitrarily. The point you click will be the bottom left corner of the box. As we know there are two types of backsplashes, a full height backsplash and one that goes up a certain distance. Either way the process is the same for both. Click draw add backsplash. A window will be open to set up the backsplash settings. If this is going to be a full height backsplash, check the full height backsplash checkbox. Otherwise, type in the height and how far you want it to appear from the slab in the drawing. Click OK and then click the two snap points you want to make the end points of the backsplash. And click in the direction of the offset. The backsplash window will appear again just in case you want to change it between full height and normal backsplash. With a full height backsplash, you will see what is basically a box with one side missing. This is indicating that the backsplash goes up all the way and that you still need to template it with our backsplash adapter. If you are doing a backsplash with a specified height, a box with the specified dimensions will be created on the screen. Besides drawing a line by tapping on two endpoints like in the right column, you can click Draw, Draw Line. This will give you the option of a one point or two point line. The two point line works the exact same way as it does in the right column. The one point line, however, works differently. You must type in the length of the line as well as the angle you want the line to be drawn. Once set up correctly, click OK. Then tap any snap point. That point will then become the beginning of the line and will be drawn from that point to the end of the line. To draw an arc, click Draw, Draw Arc. Then click any three snap points and an arc will be drawn running through those three snap points. The first and the last snap points will indicate the beginning and the end of the arc. There are two types of circles that can be drawn, one point and three point circles. Drawing a three point circle works just like drawing an arc only that it continues on to draw a full circle. To do so, click Draw, Circle. Then click the three snap points and the circle will be drawn running through those three points. To draw a one point circle, type in the size you want the radius to be and click OK. Take note that this is not the diameter. Click OK on any snap point and it will be drawn. If you want to put a bump out on a countertop, click Draw Bump Out. Then type in the distance you want the bump out to be and click OK. Then tap on the two endpoints of a line and then click in the direction you want the bump out to be created. For this example, we did a four inch bump out. That means the center of the arc is four inches off the original line. There are two types of crosses used in drawing. There is a snap cross and a manual cross. A snap cross will be snapped to the nearest snap point when you click on the screen. A manual cross, on the other hand, will be drawn wherever you click on the screen 